just one more thing I need to tell you Look at me now, look at me now Stop the fuck up and look at me now Can you see the hate? There is no way back Pack my tribe. Welcome to taking a bite out of stupid. So I'm gonna jump right in, waste no time, and just talk about this shit. I want to make something very clear right here off the top, though. I'm not at all racist. I'm not discrimin discriminatory. God fucking can't even say the word discriminatory. In any way. Now I have things that I ha I have like pet peeves or whatever about, just like anybody else. For example, I don't like fucking Scientology. I fucking hate that. I hate cults in general, but I especially hate that one. Um, for a lot of reasons, and I'm not going to get into all those right now, but. I'm not discriminating against them. I just don't like them. Because Scientologists, I like. Scientology, I don't. That makes sense. Just like Catholics, right? I love Catholics. I don't particularly care for the Vatican. Right? So I want that very clear right off the top. I'm not discriminatory, racist, anything like that. I don't care what your deal is. I don't care what pronoun you prefer. It's none of my business. It only becomes my business when you make it my business. But I was thinking about this a lot today because I was actually watching earlier a a uh, video on YouTube that was about this uh, black ops sniper and uh, the the subject came up of race and and how uh, you know he he personally knew Muslim people that were fantastic especially the kids uh, he loved the kids in this one place that he was stationed for a while over there. And uh, he had used the word, word colorblind. Or I, uh, colorblind or I don't see color. Now, I want to explain this. And I think a lot of my, my listeners out there that, that, uh, uh, are from different ethnic groups, such as Hispanic, Black, etc., 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 are going to understand where I'm coming from. I don't like those terms because it illuminates another problem. Right? Because on the one hand, you have the the racist, right? The Donald Trump Proud Boys mega assholes. Uh, you you've got the you know the KKK and all that shit. And you know, 
whatever, that problem's not going away anytime soon, unfortunately. <clears throat> but then you have the other problem, and it is the, these people that, quote-unquote, don't see color. And I... It's, sorry, that's my, my boy, breathing hard. Um, it's hot today. Anyways, uh, when you don't see color, you don't see the people of that color. You understand what I'm saying? You, you don't see that ethnic background. You don't see those traditions, those cultures, that heritage. And that's the entire fucking problem. Case in point, I've talked about it before on my show, I'm going to talk about it a little, a little bit again because it leads into this. Uh, uh, professional sports teams having to change their names because they had Native American names. And a lot of like school teams were changing their names because they have Native American names. Do you know who's not insulted by those names? Fucking Native Americans. Why wouldn't we want you to have the name for your sports team, whether it be football, hockey, wrestling team, whatever? Why would we not want you to have the most badass warriors in this country's fucking history? As your name. That's fact, people. Sorry to burst your bubble. I know you're you're sitting out there somewhere, Bubba Joe, thinking that, that your Whitey McCracker ass is the best of the best of the best. Sorry to burst that fucking bubble. That's simply not true. Understand something. If we had equal numbers, you people would have never made it off the beach. And we were defeating you without all of your weaponry. We didn't have rifles and pistols. We had tomahawks and lances and bow and arrow and war club and we were still kicking your ass. The only thing that defeated us was the fact that you people kept on coming and we were fighting off disease that you brought here. Okay? Understand that this is the people that we're talking about. When I say it's not a good idea to change those names. Because we're, yeah, there are some that are butt hurt because you're using their name, blah, blah, blah. But there's a lot of us out there, and I know because I've checked the fucking uh, uh, forums and shit, that are like, why the fuck are they doing this? Because we, we don't truly understand it. Thankfully, when they, they tried to do that shit in Chicago, the Blackhawks told them to fucking piss off. So, at least there's one. But, it, honestly, it's fucking ridiculous. Because it's not, it's not, honestly, it's not natives that are, are fucking coming forward and, and getting this ball rolling 
It's fucking Karens. Bored white ladies. Mostly. And that's illuminating my point. Because that's who is mostly behind all of this, well, I don't see color. Yeah, that's the whole fucking problem. I mean, don't get me wrong. We want to be seen as equal. We want to be seen as just as important as your average white guy. I, I'm a little bit more fortunate being half white myself. But the reality is that when you don't see color, you also aren't seeing all of the good that comes from that culture, from that heritage. Right? Like, how many people in this country know, I mean, more now probably do, but how many people in this country know that, that two key figures in, in fucking history were black? I mean, many more than just two. But the two that I'm thinking of were Alexander Dumas, the author of The Three Musketeers, and the guy whose, whose name I unfortunately don't recall, um, I'd have to look it up, uh, was the doctor who invented brain surgery. Or no, sorry, it was open heart surgery. He fucking invented it. In the 1800s. So when you don't see color, you're also overlooking all of, of those accomplishments. You're over, also overlooking very vital to the people that belong to those groups. Native American, Hispanic, Black, Asian in this country primarily you're overlooking their struggles. Not just way back in the day, the struggles that are happening right now. So don't be colorblind. Don't not see color. See it. Appreciate it. Because that's far more useful than being colorblind. I know, Bubba. It's a hot one today, huh? You got no? Yeah, you got water. Go get some water, Bobby. Go get some water. Get something to drink. Because you're clouding up my audio. I love you though. So. To uh. Further my point I guess. Um. I mean, there's tons of examples of people throughout history that uh, contributed to uh, advancements in our way of thinking, in our technology, in our science, that were not white. 
there were plenty of white guys too, don't get me wrong, I'm not taking anything away from them, but, for example, For example, uh, the guy that uh, came up with the idea for the Pony Express, which was the, by the way, if you don't know your history, let me tell you about the Pony Express. The Pony Express was a, a system of writers that would write across the country delivering mail. Okay? So, the way it would work is that there were times that writers went for like 18 to 24 hours writing non-stop by the way I like this is no joke like this was an endurance race just to deliver the mail and they had to go through through territory that was uh, you know you had hostile Indians you had outlaws trying trying to get the mail because a lot of that mail was either uh, information that they could use in robberies or it was things like uh, uh, evidence of their whereabouts it was going back east so that they could send federal marshals things like that right so it was a very dangerous job to be a Pony Express writer and because they had to limit the weight the only weapons they were allowed to carry was a gun, a six gun, a revolver, and a knife. They didn't have rifles, which meant, meant that uh, any trouble that happened out there, they could not go for long range. All right, which basically cut their survivability in half. And then uh, the only thing going for them was that they were faster than most of the people that were chasing them. And what they would do is they would ride like, like 25 miles or whatever it is to a station that had fresh horses and they would do do this Pony Express, what they call Pony Express style uh, switch from horse to horse. So that basically they would take nothing but the, uh, the mail bag off of the horse they were riding and ju literally jump into the saddle of the next horse and just book. Most of the time without even stopping for a meal or saying a word. Because they had to get from A to B in a time frame. Right? But the guy that came up with that idea was a guy named Charlie Smith. Charlie Smith was a black man. Another example is uh, uh, I'm going to butcher this name. I just know his name was Har Javier Escu I'm going to mess this up. Javier Escon 
Pozuelo, I, something like that. Um, I'd have to fucking look up how to actually properly pronounce it. So I apologize for slaughtering the name. But this guy, in the early 1800s, so we're talking around 1815, 17 maybe, came up with uh, uh, this thing called uh, tapaderos. And what tapaderos were is they were, it was essentially like armor that would go on the, uh, the, uh, uh, stirrup of the horse. Horse was saddle, right? And basically what this would do is it would prevent these huge spines and thorns from puncturing the horse. While and the leg of the rider so that uh, the caros at the time and was later adopted by cowboys uh, during the later 1800s, could ride into uh, the thicket bush areas, which were massive, some of them were 20 miles or more, to retrieve cattle. And this guy came up with the idea for this essentially armor that kind of changed the game. I mean, people and horses could still get cut up and hurt by these nasty fucking thickets, but most, a lot of lives were probably safe because of this invention, is what I'm getting at. Right? Now, you know, I, I got to correct some myths uh, about some of my native people, um, largely perpetrated by Hollywood, um, especially in the earlier days. Um, we didn't just hunt our food, okay? Yes, we re relied heavily on buffalo because a buffalo could feed a family of six for a long time. So yes, we did rely heavily on buffalo, but that wasn't our only source. We were into agriculture. We were into agriculture in places of the country that don't see it nowadays. We were irrigating in the desert. The Anasazi people, who, by the way, disappeared practically overnight, um, actually had an irrigation system in the desert and were growing crops in the fucking desert. And we're talking not yesterday, not the day before, we're talking up to like 2,000 years ago. They were irrigating the desert. Think about that. That's an advanced society. Yet, it gets overlooked. And a lot of the reason it gets overlooked is because there's all this big mystery about what the fuck happened to the Anasazi. And, you know, there there's all sorts of theories, and, and some of them are absolutely ludicrous. And some of them aren't. You know, uh, the ones that I honestly have the hardest time with are the ones perpetrated by quote-unquote so-called uh, anthropologists or archaeologists that make these sensationalist claims that they have no proof for, by the way, of them just 
picking up and disappearing in the night. The problem with that theory, first off, is that there were not only personal things left behind, there were things that no native anywhere in this country or pretty much in the world would have ever left behind. Things like water skins. There's no fucking way anybody is going to leave their water skin behind in the fucking desert. It doesn't happen. You're not using skinning tools if you leave them behind either, and they were. And that was a very important thing too because that was your food source, particularly when they were on the move. Because it was far easier to fucking gather some berries and shit and fucking shoot a couple deer or something than it was to stop on the trail and, you know, try and grow something because that would take all season. So those were the times they were living almost entirely off of honey and whatever, you know, food stores they had to bring with them. And that's the other thing that was left behind. Their food stores. So explain to me how an entire civilization disappeared off of the face of the earth. And left those things behind that they would need for survival. It doesn't make any sense. But I digress. Point is, is these people had irrigated in the desert. Way before white men ever came here. And and that's the thing I'm, I'm trying to get at is like, you can't be blind to that. You can't you can't say, well, I don't see color and. Look, I, I know when you say that, that your heart's actually in the right place. However, that's not what you should be saying. What you should be saying is, well, I see my Native American friend over there, and I appreciate his culture and what his culture has to teach us. I see my black friend over there, and I can appreciate his hoop, hoop skills. Or, you know, the, the fact that he's, you know, a talented surgeon. Or, you know, whatever it is. I see my Asian friend over there, and I, I appreciate the things that his culture has, has taught us about uh, uh, holistic medicine and herbology. Things that, by the way, modern day doctors in some places are still using. You know, or whatever it is. You know, there's myriad myriad examples of that. And you could do the same thing with white people out there. You know, there are brilliant white people out there. I'm not saying that there's not. Right? The point is, is, is you have to not only see the color, you have to appreciate the heritage, the culture, the traditions behind it. Right? Because unless we can fucking do that, we lose. And, and honesty, honestly speaking, uh, the, the I'm colorblind people, in some cases, I'm not saying all the time, but in some cases they're actually kind of fucking worse than the upfront racist. Because the upfront racist, like Trump, 
and, and all his, you know, fucktards, um, the straight up racists like him, at least they're up front about it. Right? Whereas a lot of, and I'm not saying all, okay, would never do that, but uh, a lot of the quote unquote colorblind people, um, they're worse because their racism is harder to see. And, and in those cases that I'm, I'm talking about, and like I said, not all, but some, uh, but the cases I'm talking about, it is racism. For example, the changing of the names of the sports teams, that was racist. Because that was some bored, white, fucking Karen housewife somewhere that needed a cause that looked at the natives and said, oh, well, those poor people can't fend for themselves. They can't do anything for themselves because they're so pathetic. So I'm going to do it for them. That's worse in a lot, a lot of ways. I mean, yeah, she's not burning crosses or, you know, hanging people, but it's it, it's almost like a worse kind of racism because it's you can't see it coming a lot of the time. You know, and and that's where we got to be careful, right? So don't say that you're colorblind. Don't say that you don't see color. Because, sorry, you know, uh, being a mixed person, I, I see both sides a lot of the time. But uh, I've always identified more as native than anything. And I would rather be seen and appreciated for my contributions than not. Or have someone look down on me like I'm lesser than because they needed a cause this week. Anyways, food for thought. Think about it. Hopefully we'll all take a bite out of stupid. Until next time, my pack, my tribe. Peace. Out. Get ready.
is one more thing I need to tell you There is one more thing I need to tell you Look at me now, look at me now Stop the fuck up and look at me now Can you see that?